For some of us that don't know who I am, my name is Sunday. Sunday Mobile. So you can always hit me up at any time, any point in time that you want me to help you look into something or code review or you have a blocker. I always create that room for, for us to look at it. So the purpose of this class is React Redux, not React itself, right? But if you don't understand React right now, don't be afraid, right? Uh, during the process of explanation, you will get the concept of React itself. Because the truth is, we are still doing React, right? So if you don't have the boilerplate already, we've had this session before. For some of you that are not here, we had set up a boilerplate using Create React App. So you can check this out if you don't have it. Then follow this instruction here to set up your boilerplate, right? But I'm going to you know, continue building from what we have before. Nothing uh, new there, it's just uh, scaffolding. Nothing else is there. So let me uh, start my project. You will see that we don't have any anything new. It's just, you can see it. Nothing new. Uh, okay, apart from this, I think I used it to explain uh, in our last class, uh, React life cycle and, and the rest. So uh, we are not going to go over that. Uh, we're just going to head straight up to React Redux. So what is React Redux? Like I said, it's not a module, it's not a package, it's just a design pattern, right? How do I get to Oshodi? If I ask you, you might give me different direction from what this guy will give me and from what this other guy will give me. Sorry if I don't know your name yet, but as time goes on, during Q&A, you say your name, then you ask a question. From there, we get to know each other better. Right. Uh, so, when you give me direction, you give me different direction, right? So, Redux is just another direction of getting things done. Flux is another direction of getting things done, right? A particular design pattern have their own you know, profit and loss, pros and cons, right? Advantage, disadvantage. Some are easier to use, more optimized. Some you just have to you know, go through the headache to get things done. But React, um, uh, Redux, kind of simplified thing for us to to do so. You will see how sweet it is. A uh, few things that you need to know about React Redux is there are three actually. Action, reducers, then stop. Those are the key elements of Redux. Action is simple. Like, what do you want to do? What is your intent? What has happened? An event, just like in Redux, what events occur? What event do you want to broadcast? Those are action, user action. You get that. Then when you talk about reducer, reducer are more like the event listener. Let me use that one. It's like the event listener, listening for the particular action that has happened. Do you understand that? So that is reducers. Reducers are just there listening. Once a particular action that they care for happens in, in the system or in the application, that reducer picks it up and you know, handles it based on the logic that you have implemented. Right? Then after the logic, it modifies the store. The store is like the database, like virtual database where all the results are stored. That's how it's called the stuff. Do you get it? The sweet thing about Redux, or React Redux, is that 
whenever this thought changes, any view that is using content from that store will automatically update. You don't need to, to you know, uh, subscribe to the store like you do in vlogs. Do you get? You don't need to do that. By default, they are kind of binded together. Whenever the store changes, the view re-renders, and you are going to see it in the demo in a few. So it's just that simple. Now there are new keywords that you need to know. And there are very few. There are not much. You know provider. Provider is a component that you need to wrap every other of your component. Like when you come to a React app, we have one entrance, right? One entrance that will require other components. So in this case, that one entrance will be wrapped with provider. And the provider is connected to the store. Do you understand that? So the store provides the content, the provider makes it available to your application. Do you get it? So the other one you need to know is connect. Connect, what it does, as it sounds, connect. It connects each component or it maps each component to a particular property in the store. Have I confused you? When you have an attribute in the store, your connect, what it does is it picks a particular property and maps it to a particular component so that that value is available to that component to use. And whenever that value changes, that component re-renders. Clear? Cool. Another thing I want to mention is Tonk. We are getting there, you will see all this thing in the demo, and I will explain more. Tonk is a middleware that allows you to do asynchronous uh, call. Without that, ASIC call in React Redux will not be possible. So, but we'll, we'll get there. So let's just quick, let's forget the theory and you know, kind of look into the application itself and let's see what we can achieve. Quickly, I'll dive here. So the first thing we want to do is define the action. From, from beginning, we already know the kind of action we want, depending on the kind of app you are building, right? But in this case, we are going to mimic posts or a blog application, whereby we just we make a post, we retrieve a post, we can create a post, right? And we can update a post and we can delete a post. Right? Those are the major operations you will find yourself doing in any application that you are building. Right? Irrespective of whatsoever logic that has to go into it. If it is an authentication, it simply means you will create a user, right? You will fetch a user. When you are logging in, you are actually fetching a user, right? Then you can update a user if you want the user to update their profile or whatsoever. You can delete a user if you want the user to delete their account. So whatsoever you are doing, it falls into that for operation. You are creating, you are updating, you are fetching, and you are listing, which is like, like fetch, then delete. So that for operation we are going to see. God help us, we will move fast to complete that. So, I told you before, I'm just going to use this uh, wall app front end as a reference, and I'm going to be copying and pasting just for us to move faster, right? So, I told us that the first thing to do is to create your actions, because actions is more visible to us. We know what we expect, and the way, is, the way you do this is, you can see the way I line up my folders. I created action folder, I have a component folder, which is more like the display uh, component. Then I have reducers, which is more like the listeners, right? And this one is test, so I'm not going to look into this folder at all for this session, right? So, 
I open this and we have oat action and wall action. I mean, we call this waller. So I kind of uh, created a wall action. Wall action, it might be a post action if we wanted to be more specific, right? It should be a post action. So the, every segment of your application needs its own action in a separate file, just more like code separation. It's not something fancy. You can decide to drop everything in one large file, but I mean, it's not advisable. It's going to they are going to have issue trying to manage that code. But it's good you have them in separate file. So you will see. So what we care about is the wall action because we are not going to handle authentication for this class. So what we care about is this. So now when you look at this, these are all action types. In your own project, you can decide to move this into action types as a file and put it there then you can import it here and use it. It's more cleaner that way. Do you get it? But these are all action types that we want to. So what we care about in this particular session is post new message, post, uh, we're not going to talk about this, post new like is just when you like a post, right? So we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the comments. Uh, what else do we care about? Fetch posts. And receive post. Those are the action types you are going to use for this class. So if you look at this place, you will see post new message, you see new post like, you see this. These are all action handles or methods that you use to trigger an action. Now, this is what we care about posting a new message. So let's quickly get that on. You need this okay let me take all this from here and so now remember here is very new so I'm going to create a folder oops uh, folder that's fine call it actions yeah, we are going to bury all our action. Then we create a new file here and we make our paste. Uh, this, let's just call this posts actions. .js. Right? So we have this here. Now there are some action types here that we don't really need. We will take them out. Don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. Comment no. New message. Message fail. Fetch and receive. That's all we care about. Now, if you look at this first place, I have an util file that have some utility uh, method that helps me to handle quick stuff. Right, so you can decide to do this if you want. I, I see it cleaner that way. Some people make the mistake of putting a utility uh, function in the action file, and some put it in the component. But the truth is, something that is uh, used by more than one component should be in a separate file, right? So you don't have to import from another component into another component. Not advisable. So I have this UT file. I'm just going to create that here. New file. And I'm just going to copy that content from UT. I will explain every bit later. You don't need everything here, but I'm just going to move it, right? All right, so we have this here, and we have this imported here. 
just to be sure. Whereas, yeah, so this one will be fired where we want to post a new message, right? Then we'll pass the data. So we'll explain that in, in detail. Harrison. Post a new message. I think there's another action there that we we'll care about. Let's go back to actions. Wall action. And we have post new message and get posts. This is another one we care about. Get posts. All right. So we'll get to the explanation later. Uh, let me take uh, the reducers. Now I need few components. I need few display components to display our posts, right? So we're just going to create a component for that. So if you go to the components, you will see a list of components here. You can take a look at them one by one, see what I did inside and see what you think you might need or the concept that you like. So if you look at posts.json, we are not going to use everything here. I'm just going to copy a few things. Now remember, we are, uh, in this place, I'm using uh, React Bootstrap. So I'm not going to do that in this section. So I'm just going to use ordinary div just to illustrate quick the concepts that we need. So in your post components, let's create that file. Remember, a folder called components. Then create a file posts. Uh, let me see this file first. Posts, yes. Then now this is the connect I discussed with you. The connect is very important when you want to link the property in the store. I need this. Not sure. Yeah. Just in this. So we don't need this. We're not going to use it. And run this. Cool. And get this. Just add the render method. And return. <laughs> so this one, this this is just a test, right? Just to kick to kickstart this for us to see that everything works. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I, I really find it difficult to type. That's something high. Hi. Thanks. Yeah, makes sense. All right. So we have posts here, and if you look at this, I imported component from React, and I'm extending that. So these are just React, no flux, no readers going on here. So apart from what I imported here anyway. Now, for us not to get error, we need to install this. I don't think I've installed it in this package. Yep. Import? Connect from React. Yes. Is 
clothes. Uh, like, join, join React. <laughs> React Redux is a is, is like a component, is a module, a package that has helped us to implement some methods, like an API. Like I said, the connect. The connect is just just like I have my utils. It, well, if, if I decide now, I can package this utils and push it to package store. So anyone that li likes my utility methods can, you know, require this as a dependency in, in their own project. For them not to write it again, they can just import from, from that utility method. Do you understand now? So they are just utility methods that has been implemented for us. I mean, you can decide to do your own, write your own connect. Do you get so. Right. Okay, so I, I want to install this dependency. Let's have that. So, as this is loading, let's uh, try to use these posts. Remember, we want to render this post in our landing page, so I'm not doing anything fancy. This is the entrance. The entrance is rendering uh, app, right? So, in my app, app.js, this is what is there currently. So, I want to change this to render my own component. So, I'm going to import... Uh, posts from my components slash posts. So, yeah, with S, thanks. Why did the pop up <laughs> the first place? Okay. So we have this, we need to export this, remember, export default post. Alright, so we have that uh, in our so we render post here. Nothing fancy, just going to render the default. So let's see. Yeah, this is installed. And what else do we need here? Nothing. Cool. So our uh, ETU cannot be found. Okay, yeah. I used a toast. So I'm just going to install this so that we don't have to go to to the util for modification. So just use it the way it is. Even though, okay, we might, we might just use it so you understand how to give uh, feedback to your user when something goes wrong with your React project. Okay. Yeah, it's also like page. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming one by one. <laughs> Uh, no, Redux. Sure. Uh, I don't want to use everything that is in that package that just can so. can see. Here. Mm. Uh, not everything we need. No, this is overkill. Don't need everything. So I might need this because of my want to call API. So let's just get that.
yeah, to call that is to fetch external data. It's just like your request. You get your request of exactly the same thing. All right, what else is missing? Nothing, so we are fine. You can see posts, right? So now we have our component shown, and all we have to do is now define our action which we have done. Then let's define the reducer. New folder reducers. Then posts uh, .js. You can you can decide to append reducers to it, but I mean we already have a folder separating them. So uh, adding reducers to them is like extra text that is not necessary. So let me just copy that. <coughs> These are my reducers for posts. I don't need everything. I'm going to explain uh, later. I just get get it kick started. So we don't need this one, like, we don't need comment, and comment and like, we don't need that. So new post, new message, message field, fetch post, receive post, which is fine. Now, the next thing we want to do is our store. Now we have our action, we have our reducers. So the next thing you want to do is your store. Now, some people like combining uh, all the reducers in, in a dot, uh, that is index file, so that you can configure your store in a separate file then import it. I mean, whichever approach you like is fine. Uh, but what I did here, I didn't have my store in a separate file because this was just a demo and it's a very small project. So if you are having multiple things to manage, I don't think you should go this direction. Now, this is where I define my store. You can see here, I have a store wrapper that uh, kind of join all the reducers together. Do you understand that? Then before calling the create store. And this is the middleware I'm telling you about, Tonk. Tonk middleware. Uh, it helps you to do asynchronous calls. So we need this. Not everything, but I'm just going to copy then remove what I don't need. Think from here. All right, so in our app.js, we have this in now. All this is going to trail up because we don't have post list defined currently. Uh, we need the provider. Remember, I mentioned it earlier and what it does. Uh, the tongue pedal where crystal just help us to like uh, store initializer. That's what it is. Hmm? Yeah, it's a function. Can you can see where I used it here? It's a function. So it's more like initializer. Yes, uh, from readers. And we don't need this. 
we don't need this. Okay, we need this. What? Mm -hmm. Great store. I think it, it bundles that for you. So, uh, we need this here now. Transaction notification. We might need that. Well, not sure. All right. So, we don't need the authentication one. So, I'm going just to take that off. We have posts are uh, important from this and now this is this we are importing from uh, our reducer if you come here you will see that the method is posts and we need to export this you can see it's exported and i can import this from any other file so what i'm importing here is that post and by default this wrapper will get the state and the action available so what I need here is the world so if you look at my reducer here I have I, I am setting this to war here so whatsoever you call the key is what you will use here so since here is war here is war so I'm going to change it to post since is what we are doing and posts so now we create the store, we just pass in the wrapper, which will just help us to combine every reducers. So you just list all the reducers that you have here and give them the key that you need them to be. And once you've done this, you need to wrap this place with the provider so that the store is available to every of the components. So we just get that. So if you look at what I implemented here, you'll notice that that's what is going on. You can see the provider wraps every other thing here, right? So we don't need everything, but... The provider doesn't... Yeah, the provider kind of like the name, it provides you with the information in the store. Do you get it? So if you, if you look at the implementation, you will see that the store is passed into the provider. You can see it here. It's passed into the provider as a prop. Right? So, just uh, for us to move faster, if you have a question, note it down. So, we'll just answer everything during the QA and another. Okay. So. <coughs> This notification, I don't think I installed it, so let me install. Uh, I think I think we do, we did. Uh, okay. Header, we don't need that. Uh, status form, we don't need that for now. So post lists. So let's create this component post list because we need a component that will list all the posts. Post we have. A single instance of the post posts list we have like a list of posts uh, I mean you understand what it is so let's have that created post list so now, post lists will just have a list of posts. So let's go get that from, so we don't need this anymore. Go to the components and grab post lists. Not everything we need, I'm just going to modify it because there are some things we are not using. So this imports the post. Uh, okay, React Loader, let's have this. Because you are using it to, I'm just going to use it to show you a demo of how you can give feedback to your user when you are doing a background fetch. Do you understand that? 
when a, a background request is going on, you need to show a preloader to say, tell your user that something is loading, please wait or something like that. Right? That's what this um, loader does. So if you can see here, the list, uh, the loader is like the parent's uh, tag here. So every other thing is inside the loader. So the lo loader is visible when the, the request is uh, ready. So you can see here, I passed loading message here, and we have requesting posts. That means something is going on, and I will, I will show you where this value is coming from, and you understand what's going on. So we have this, um, we need this, just looking at the contents. Okay. Yep. So here it should be posts. And what? No, I will explain all this. Right? I'm going to explain from top to bottom. So that's just looking at the time, I need to be very fast. Okay, so we have posts. Uh, let's get, uh, let's just copy this to um, read the posts. And let me just get all this. Oh, we might not need everything. I'll, I'll strip off things that I don't need. So in our posts, not this, post.js, want to put what? So we don't need all this. And post action button. So I'm just going to change all this to div. So I don't need this first one. So I'm just going to keep it simple. I just want to show a list of posts and that's all. Now our post is not going to have image and I'm not going to have button, this button in the first place. So I'm just going to change this to div and this Right. So if you, can, you see here, this is just accessing post.message, just showing the message contents and that's all. Uh, okay. We'll go over this to understand this. We don't need this anymore. Just rushing it. We don't need this either. I don't think we'll do creating today, but let's see. Posts, user is no longer required, but we, we need the posts. Get image, we don't need it, we don't need this anymore. Okay. Uh, yep, it's fine, this is fine. So now, for the purpose of a quick uh, demo, without calling the API for now, we are going to change something here. If you look at post lists, post list is calling get posts here. So get posts is going to call an API, but we are just going to kind of mimic what our API will look like, right? then we can now uh, see uh, the difference between calling an external call to uh, let's see actions post so 
you look at this, it's, it's calling a post request. Now, these are all utility methods that I've created in this uh, util file, which are going to go over. But for now, I'm going to quickly do something simple. Like commenting this. Well, I think the API might be up, so we can just use this because of our time. But I'd like to piece this and show us step by step of how or, or things that we can modify. But the get post is as simple as this. But let's let's move on. Let's see something we are missing here. Post lists have not been imported. I don't need this here. This here All right. So let's see what our end result looks like for now. Uh, error in post.json. Yep. This. I'm still referencing that. I don't even need this. What else? Let's see. Action, wall action. Yeah, post lists. Okay, get posts is, you know we changed this to posts and see our action we call it post actions so should be posts small <coughs> let's see what else in reducer we are also calling wall actions okay just have to correct all that because we changed a lot of things. So. Check it again. Module not found. This time, where? Okay, Tonk. Did React Redux installation fail? I think so. Hmm. So I have to install that. Too. Okay. Quick one. So now we just have some warning. Yep. So we are we are good. So you can see, these are posts that are entered by some of you guys when we were testing the solution the other, in the other class. So these are lists of posts, and this thing, they are coming from a real database API uh, online. So if I reload this, see? comes back. So now, let's uh, get on with the explanation of thing proper to understand what is really going on here. So now, from the entry points, app.js here. I've explained this, how the store provides, uh, the provider uh, houses the store values, and here we are just your normal components, right? So what we say, we should, the first thing we want our user to see, it depends on your own design, right? But in this case, we just need a, the list of posts in our home page. So we call this component list, uh, post list. Right now, nothing readers going on apart from this, right? And this. 
Like I said, you can use combined reducer to do this. This one that I did here is the same thing with combined reducers. If you use combined reducers, you don't need this one. Do you understand me now? So your combined reducers can replace this and when you combine your reducers, you pass it to the create store and your store is passed to the provider. I've explained what Tonk does. It, it uh, helps you to do ASIC calls. Imagine we remove this. Let's just give it a try, right? If we remove this, look at what happens. No data coming in. Do you see it now? Because I'm, I'm doing an asynchronous call. Do you get it? So this is very important for the flow. Now, this is your store. Now let's move into post lists. We're just navigating how uh, Redux flow works. From the store, the store provides the information and the next entry point is post list. Now, post list is imported from components. And if you look at post lists, now, if, if you are here in the other class and we discuss React lifecycle, I told us that component we mount will be called before the render, right? So because I want this uh, fetch to start before the component renders, I, I implemented component we mount and I called this method. Now, how am I able to get a dispatch method from my props? It doesn't come with, by default with a React component. It is because of this connect. This connect maps that dispatch to this component. Now, in your normal React, you just do export default, then the name of the class. But in Redux, in React Redux, you do export default connect. If it's not a must, if you want the component to get value from the store, you use connect. If you want the component to have a dispatch method in the prop, you use connect. Even though you are not passing data to that component, you can use this connect so that it will connect the dispatcher from the store. Dispatcher is coming from the store uh, object. It will map it to the prop, that is to the component. So if you look at this place now, this function called map state to prop, we are simply assessing value from, from the store. You can see state. This state is coming from the store. The state value is coming from the store. Right? And inside that state, we are assessing the post uh, key. We can have 100 of different keys in, this, in the state object in our store, but we are assessing posts and we are mapping requesting posts to requesting posts in our post properties. Do you see now? We are mapping a list of posts to the list of posts in our store. These are just how the map should look like. And we are now passing this and connecting it with our post list. Do you understand now? This one is just uh, the prototype. You, you, I believe you all understand this, so I'll just skip that part. So this one is, it has nothing to do with Redux. This one is React things, right? So, the connect. Yeah, like I said, see, by default, you see that this, this map straight to prop accepts two parameters, state and props. Now, this state is your store. See it as your store. You can change it to store if you like. You can call it anything. Do you get? But React-wise, it's good to use state. Do you get? Because is that's the name that associates React with component states. So you use states. Do you get? So, but it is your store. If you console log here, let us do that. If you console log here, and we put in states, 
and we put in props you will see here let's go to our browser please what's the time let me know when it's 7 45 cool don't let me know when it's 7 45 so now if you look at this let's inspect elements these are debugging techniques if you want to see what is really happening in your solution. So now, look at the first object, state. State has posts. Remember that in our store, we only have posts. Now, let's imagine that I added, let's come to our store where we define our store. Remember, this is our store. Now, this is where we mapped our uh, we combined our reducers, right? So imagine that we have another reducer. That's, let's say, comments. Do you understand? Comments. And now, let's assume that our comments have a list of comment, um, comments. Or anything. We can put anything. Let's say A is equals to X, M, maybe B. Just anything based on what you are storing. Do you get so now let's save this and let's come back to our browser now let's reload this this is the log do you see our our states now have comments inside do you see that so now this this comment contains the information i passed in your own it might be coming from another reducer do you understand? Is it clearer? Right? The comments might be coming from another reducer. Remember that our post is actually coming from a reducer, not hard-coded. It's dynamic, which we are still going to explain in this course. Right? So, the comments, we had coded it. This one can never change. Right? But this one is dynamic. It can change. You can see here, loading force let's let's look up let's do this let's see do you see that it logs this several times this this and this now let's see changes this one will never change because we had coded it but look at this one requesting force look at this posts what do you see here zero no post yet now look at the second log this one remains the same because it's hard coded. Look at our posts. Do you see this? Zero. Requesting what? It means it has made the API call. This one is the default state, which I'm still going to explain to us when we go to the action and reduce us. Right? This one is the default or initial state. Do you understand? Then this one is. Something has happened and the reducer has changed the store. Do you get? So this one has updated requesting post to true because we have dispatched an action which we are still going to explain. Right? Now, after that, come here. Okay. Look at this. Fetch complete. Do you see? It has made an API call to this URL. You can use this to play around. It's, it's hosted on Heroku. So you can always use it to play around. Look, that's the URL. wallapi.heroku.com slash api slash walls. That's to fetch posts. So you can use that to play around on how to access APIs. So now, look at the object that happens after the fetch is complete. Look at what happens. Post changes. We have 10 from 0. It has fetched 10 posts. And requesting post is now what? False. So that, that, that is the process in which our store states keep changing. So our state is our store. But what we need in this, uh, look, at, look at here. What we need in our post lists, where is it? What we need here, we do not care about the comments in this post list. Are you listening? We don't care about the comments. So we want to map the, the state from the store that we need to this current component, which is post list. 
So we in here, we are simply returning an object. Can't you see that it's just an object you are returning? So that object just maps key and value, key and value. And this key can be anything. It's not much that it will be the same thing. You can call it anything. You can call it loading. Do you understand me? And you map it, but this one cannot change. This one would be exactly the key you have in your store. Do you understand that point? But you can change it here. You can call it anything. But it's good for consistency. You name it the same thing. Do you understand me now? So if you care to have loading here, you can name your store loading. Do you understand? So that's just it. Now, once you have mapped the values from the store that you care about, you use connect to map it to the component. So by default, when React renders this component, all these values are available as props. So you can access them via props. If you have done React here, you know what props are, right? So you can access this value via props in that component. Now, if you look at this component here, you look at what I'm doing here. This dot props dot posts dot map. Remember, our post is an array. An array has a property called map that helps us to go through it and do a particular action to each of the values, right? So, and during the loop, we are importing our post component, which is just a single representation of one post, right? And we are passing the post as a prop to the component so that it can use it to display the content. And key is very important. If you have been doing React, you should know this. If you don't add the key, you will be complaining, right? When you are in a loop, you need a key, right? So index, let's not talk about that. It's not important. Right? So, now this is what uh, goes through and displays our post for us. Very simple, very easy. I believe this is clear. Connect is clear to everyone now. Now, some other process that you might do is map action to prop. You can also map an action to a prop so that if you want to call an action, for example, what I did here, I did props.dispatch. What if I want to do this.props.getPosts? Do you get? I can, instead of me doing this, I can say, okay, I want to map, uh, I can create another function, call it, or I can even add it here. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. Do you get? I can say get posts here equals to get posts. Remember, I imported get post here. So this one is what I'm referencing here. So I'm mapping it to this. You see now? So I can come here and I call this, this does prop dot, you know, get post straight up. But sometimes I don't want to be doing this to get messy when I can just call dispatch and pass the method to it. Do you get? It looks cleaner that way. For me, it looks cleaner, right? It's my own approach is not really a standard, right? It's just uh, having it clean. So when I dispatch this, this, this one, we dispatch this, which we start to get the post. So the next thing we are going to want to explain now is get post, which is the action itself. Do you understand? So this is the component. Component dispatches an action. Action takes it from there and does its own process, which are going to see right away. Yeah, I, think, uh, I, I think when we somehow we finish with one... Um, you want to ask question? Okay, okay, so what's your question? Quick, because if we have to do it like that, it means we might not finish this. That's my point. We might not finish this. And if you stop halfway and you don't get everything, it means you have to go and figure it out yourself. Okay. Do you understand? So, quick one. What's the question? Let's see if we can. Now, um, we, we are calling vendor, we are calling return, we have a builder, we yes. have some stuff inside builder. Mm -hmm. Now, that builder is saying, okay, while this is running, you can see that before it comes in, put this loader. Put preloader. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And immediately after the result coming, what, what are we showing now? The preloader will disappear and the content inside the preloader will be visible to the user. The content inside the preloader. So it means if I want to have the now, you can put it written inside the preloader. Pre yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. And then Just like your provider, provider houses all your application. Loader houses everything that you don't want the user to see when something is loading. For example, you might have a very big page, and it's just one side of the page that the content is still loading. You only Hide that side, not all your application. I mean, your header can still be visible, your footer will be visible, your sidebar will still be visible. It's just the place that the content is will be something is coming, something is coming. Once it's done, it shows. Do you understand? For example, now let's say we have a header. Let's assume that we have something here. This div. Let's say, uh, did I cut something? Let's say this is our header, H1. Header. Hmm? And your loader can be here. Because this is what we care about to hide. Do you understand? This place we want to hide, but we don't want to hide the header. Neither do we want to hide the footer. Do you understand now? So, if you do this, let's look at our browser. Do you see loading? It's because it's in white text. That's why you're not seeing it. When I, I, I reloaded this, do you see that text loading? Do you see it? Clear. Now, that means we can have more than one loader on a page. Exactly. You can. If, if you have several things loading in different places, and you want to show different loaders everywhere, you can do that. Okay. It's your choice. <laughs> it depends on your design or the solution you are working on. Do you get it? And again, there are different preloaders. It's not must you use this one. There are different packages that does that for you. So you can always Google and get other sweet ones. Like this one now is just text. I can decide to pass in animated GIF that is loading. So I can decide to do that. But it will be within that loader. It will be within that place. Cool. So let's move on. That is. What you're asking me is not Redux. <laughs> that is not Redux. So let's quickly finish this. Right? So, now we are diving into action. Now, we've seen how our store is mapped to, to a particular component. Our store value is mapped to a particular component. Let's see how the action works. Now, this is the action that was called get posts. Now, the first thing this action does is it dispatches an event called fetch posts. Event type called fetch posts. Remember when we logged our store, it shows three different states of, of our store transitioning. The first thing, the first time it shows the initial state. The second time it shows this the store with fetching as true. The next one, it shows the content and fetching as false, right? So this is what happens. When we start getting posts, it dispatches this action to tell the view that something is now loading. This one is simply telling you that something is now loading. Now, we make the API request. If you go to this get, let's just quickly look at utils.js so you understand what is happening. It's just your normal API call. Where is the get? You see it? Here I use fetch. You can use your Azure's uh, or your super agent request, anyone you want. Here. Sorry. So here I'm calling my base URL and I'm adding the path to it. 
it's just a utility method I created. You don't have to go through this route. It's not a must. You can decide to call your fetch inside your action. No law says you shouldn't do that. Do you get it? So, it's just like I said, clean. Cleaning my code to look neat is my type of person. So, don't mind if I have several files linking. So now, we have this get, and I want to call uh, my API simply to get the list of posts. And after it is done, which is dot then, it returns a promise. The get returns a promise. And after the promise, what do I want to do? I want to dispatch an action type receive post. Receive post means post has, I've gotten the post from the API. I want to give it to the store. So I am not telling my reducer that I should receive the post. Remember I told us that reducers are like event listener. So this dispatch is just like triggering an event. Do you get? So for this fetch get post, how many actions do you think we trigger there? Two. Two different action types. One is, is not loading. Two is it has loaded. Take the content. Do you understand? So in this case, now I need to mention this event action is not a React uh, a React Redux or a React property. You can see that it's coming from my util. Do you see? So you need to be careful. So you don't think that this one you have to go and be looking for event action. It does not exist anywhere. Do you get? I created this. It's just a dynamic action creator for me. Do you get? Some people prefer to create different uh, action for them. Do you get? But I just want to use one that is dynamic. I can just pass parameters to them and it's fine. So if you look at the utils, let's go there again for clarity's sake. If you look at event action, this is what it returns. The type of event and the payload if it's available. Do you get? So you can decide to create your own separately. Like create like this one now, like in this place that I have uh, in this post action now, I, I dispatch two action. So for me, if I don't want to use this event action, I have to define two method here that will return for fetch post and for receive post. Do you understand? So, but for me, I just need a utility method that I can call all the time to do stuff for me. That's why I created that. So now I dispatch this, and this is the action type. I dispatch this, this is the action type. And you can see this one has a payload. This one does not have a payload. It means that this one payload will be undefined, and this one payload will have value. Is it clear? So in this case, our payload is the list of posts. Do you get that was fetched from our backend? It's not must you call it payload. You can call it anything. Do you get? It's a variable name. Do you understand? So now, this is our action. Very simple, right? Just dispatch, dispatch. That's it. Very easy. So now, let's go to our reducers. Because after it dispatches this, the next place that it bounces to is the reducer. Remember, our reducers are event listeners. So once the event happens, the event list dies, our reducer picks it up and handles the request. So let's check our reducer to see what's going on there. Now look at this. It says, the first thing we trigger there is what? Fetch posts. So this is it. It's saying case action dot fetch post. Now let us start from here from initial state. This is my initial state. Now, your initial state must be, listen, this is very important. So many fellows always fail this part, and I don't know why, right? Sometimes they will have initial state to be an array, and they will end up returning an object, which is not good. Your initial state must be a complete mirror of how you want your final state to look like. The default value must be 
a zero value of the kind of data type you want it to, to hold. This is very important. Now, if you look at my initial state, I have requesting post and I set it to false because from beginning, I don't want anything to load, content to load. Do you get? Now, sending posts, this is a different one. I want it to be false, right? The one we use in this tutorial is requesting posts. Sending posts is, is when we want to create, but we are not covering that in this time because uh, we don't have enough time to do that. So, you can see posts. We know that post is expecting a list of objects, it's a list. So, the zero value of a list is empty array. I have to set it there. Then, once you define this, you pass your initial state to this place, to the uh, zero value of the state. Then, action is the action you dispatch. Do you get? That's why we come here. So, hmm? Yeah. So, switching what? Action type. We are going through the action type. We are listening to the kind of action type that was dispatched. So, we are saying, in case it is fetch post. Fetch post simply means it's trying to fetch a post. Right? So, all we have to do is... Now, there's one more important thing you need to note. In your, in your reducer, do not mutate states. When I say mutate, I mean change the content of your state directly. Always copy the value of your state, modify the change, and return the new state. Now, if you look at this, object.assign does that for us. I mean, this thing, this thing that I do here, I would have just done states dot requesting post equals to true right and return states is the same thing that i just did return states but this is bad practice do you understand this is bad practice don't ever uh, try to modify state directly like this don't try it hmm? it's an offense yeah so you use object.assign to copy the current state into a new object. Do you see that? Then pass in a list of keys of value that you want to modify in the state. Now, you must, the key that you pass here must match what is in the state. Because that's what it will use to match it up. Anyone that corresponds to the state, it will replace. Anyone that doesn't match, it will add. Do you see now? So always make sure that the key you have here is exactly the key you want to modify in the initial state. So in our fetch store, all we care about to modify is requesting posts. Right? And we have changed it to true. That's when the preloader will show. Right? Now, after this, the next action we, we dispatch is what? Receive posts. So if is received post, all we want to do is set our request into false and set our post to what is coming from the payload. Clear? Right? So that is how uh, the store is being modified. Cool. Yeah? Yes. Yes, exactly. What you return here is what goes to the store. Yes. Whatsoever you return here goes to the store. Remember that this post, we connected it to the store. Go back to our app.json. This is it. You remember. This is how it connects to the store. And this is where we mapped it to create store. Clear. You need to be loud so we can hear you. Others who want to hear you. Like I said, it helps you to do asynchronous call. Without it, asynchronous call is not possible. Do you get? It's just what it is. You don't need to know much about it. That's what it does. Right? 
Once you apply this, is you apply it that is you use apply middleware. Apply middleware is coming from Redux. Do you see that? So apply middleware is that is the tongue is applied to 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 the middleware, and you're able to make and see calls. Without it, nothing goes through. Cool. Uh, it seems like in this because this these are the JS is like our entry point. Yeah, because our index is calling your app. Your app, yes. app. Exactly. Do you get? So the the elements of the store in that app, the JS are just the function and the variable there. The elements in I didn't get that question. Sorry. Okay, just go back. It seems like this and this are the only like things that are really store. Now I'm trying to think of this as a. In, in, in a flux kind of way. Don't, don't, see, delete flux from your head because you end up confusing yourself the more. Do you get? Just see the way these guys do their own and love it. Because if you, if you, if you look at this, it's very simple compared to flux. Right? Here, our store, we don't need to create event listeners. We don't need to handle the registration by ourselves. The connect help us do that. Do you get? It helps us to do all that. Right? All we have to do is combine our reducers, pass it to the store, and the store passes it to the provider. The provider provides it to, the, to our components, which is our application. All the different parts of the application and put it in one store instead of managing separate several stores like your post has his own store have his own event listener have his own registration your comment will have his own store which is what uh, flux does right but in this case see your that your separate stores as separate reducers in redux in redux then after you have them separate, you now combine them, then throw them into the store. It's as simple as that. Do you get? Redux is sweet and very easy. Once you know where to connect the wire. All right? Just one store. Right? That is why we have the connect. Any component you want to pick value from the store, you use connect to map the property to the uh, component property, which is what we are doing here. Can see what we are doing here. We don't need this. Can see map state to prop. This function must not be map state to prop. It's not compulsory, but this is what the community accepts. The community has been using map state to prop, so everybody just adopted it. So you can decide to call your own anything, and but just make sure that whatsoever you call here, just pass it here as a parameter. So this map state is what accesses this. This connect. You pass the see. You, can you see that we have two parentheses here? It's like a function that returns a function that is called a gain. Do you get? Connect returns a function, and the function is called a gain, passing the actual component name to it. Do you understand? So the first one are all the attributes that you want to map to the component. Then the last one is the component itself. Do you get? Now, the thing is that post is using here. Is what we are connecting here. Yes. And this one is higher up. This one is lower. <laughs> Remember that you referenced this name here. Okay. <laughs> what I get is that when you do connect maps, then it helps in the space. So think like everything inside that renders me in that post is now. Inside now here. Inside this map space. I didn't get that question. Come again. Like, connect maps to the problem. Uh, everything inside post is that the renders the post is now. Uh -huh. will now be as a pop inside 
It's the other way around. Everything you have here are available in these components. <laughs> Everything you map here is just like calling post list and you're not passing props to it. Do you get? So this one does it automatically for you. It maps state to props. Props of what? Prop of post list. Do you understand? State of it gets the state from the store okay, and maps it to the component where you want to use the value. Beautiful. Let's see the store now, please. Put, put the store. I, I think I'm, I'm totally getting it. See, see, map state to prop is a function, like I told you before, and it accepts parameters. Now, you can call this anything, but the truth is, connect we call the function that you have here with these parameters. Do you get? Remember when we passed it here, we did not call it as a function. You see, we did not say, uh, why is this thing not full screen again? Okay, so here, we did not call this like this. Do you get? We didn't call it. So what we did is we passed it as an object, uh, that is a function, to connect. So connect is the one that will end up calling map state to prop. It will call it and pass state and props to it. So all you have to do is, when you are implementing this function, tell this function how to use this state and props. And this is how we want it to use, to use it. And all it does is, Whatsoever you return here, any object you return here, right, will be what? Passed to your post list. Let's go deeper. Let's say this, uh, look at this, uh, state to prop post. Remember, we are expecting a list of posts here, right? So imagine that we just say, okay, we don't want this list. We want to pass our own list. We want to hard code it. So we can say message equals to test one. Then another one message equals to test two. Do you see now we have two posts here? Let's save this and now let's let's see what happens to our browser. Do you see that? Why is that two? Something happened. <laughs> Do you see loading? Because that one is showing because it's not coming from uh, the API. This one is already available. That's why it's showing. Even though the server one is not ready, but this one is ready. Do you see now? So, the other one was coming from the store. But in this case, we have intercepted from the store. We are just sending a hard coded value. But this is what we, we want to do. We want to be getting it from the store. Yes, yes. Exactly. So, that Yeah. Post component simply does one thing. It prints the message. Do you see it now? And remember that we are receiving the post from the props, which we passed from post list. When we are looping, we are passing post as a key here and passing the post as a value. Cool? And the store is the one we are using now. I think we've gotten... It's not really confusing. Why should it be confusing? The store houses your content. You are just accessing the content from the store. And your reducer is just you know, helping you to modify the store based on the dispatched events. Do you get it? The provider, the provider, like I told you, provider, you don't define it yourself. Do you get it? Look at the provider. It's coming from 
React Redux. So it's just a component provided by React Redux, which you, you just use to uh, house all your component entrance. So which one now? So, so Everything is under the provider tag. Can't you see it? Yeah. It's under it, yeah. Do you get it? Why is requesting post not inside that state? We, we, yeah, we are supposed to declare states. Flux is confusing you, and I don't know why. <laughs> Stop <laughs> looking at Flux and learn Redux. I'm trying to. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> but you, you can always uh, pick this video. I'm going to upload this video. I think I recorded this session. Hopefully, it's going to be loud enough. Mm -hmm. To provider. Yes. Provider makes it available to every child component. Okay. So that's how the store is getting to post. Yes. Okay, so when you when you like you know, there are some things like you create a different component array that and another component. In another component. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Cool. All right, you can you can draw further question uh, to me on Slack. I'll be happy to help. Thank you.